Hey AP students, in this video I'm going to share with you how to ace the short answer question, the SAQ. Let's study what this all means and how to go about it as well. So what is the short answer question? You'll have two different types of them, but there's different variations of them. So the first one is with stimuli. Anytime you see that word stimuli in AP US history, it's supposed to be something to kind of jog your memory, but really it's to get a response or some sort of a reaction. Hopefully it would be a positive one, but visually you may be given a painting cartoons, data, graph, and map, any of those sorts of things and answer questions that kind of go along with them. And then the second type with stimuli are just those with text, as in you might get a primary source, um, somebody who actually witnessed something in U.S. history, uh, first-hand account primary, and then secondary sources, those are going to be your historians where you'll have opposing views on a particular uh, moment in U.S. history, maybe the Vietnam War, the Civil, the Civil War, something of that nature. And then the second type of short answer question, those without stimuli, where it may just ask you just a direct question as in um, explain a cause of the American Revolution um, and then do it again, give me another cause. And then potentially in part C, we'll give yet another cause of the American Revolution. How to write the short answer question. Treat me, the teacher, as if I'm five years old. Treat me as if you're gonna, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, I, maybe I'm from another planet. You would be super descriptive to people um, with no knowledge of your country if they're from a foreign country and a foreign exchange student or something like that. So be directly answer the question first, but be painfully explicit. Um, use as much evidence as you can and then use as many examples as you can to prove whatever point you're making in your writing. Use a phraseology of the question, but do not rewrite or repeat the question itself. I want to see original thoughts and I know the College Board and the readers do too. I want to see your thoughts um, when you write. And then so, and finally, um, include a, as much specific historical terms, events, and people as you can in each section of the SAQ. Limit your response to each section to two to four content rich sentences. You have 20, 30 lines on which to write. That's about one, um, one side of a single piece of loose leaf paper. And then I want you to format your SAQs exactly like you see on the slide before you. So letter each part and put a blank line in between each. So you'll have A, then about three sentences, three to four sentences for part A. The same thing for B, about three to four sentences, and then C, about three to four sentences. I hope you see this is not the same thing as writing an essay, but you are making a claim and you are backing it up with some sort of evidence as well. So explain the relationship or the effect or the connections. Make sure to include the whys and hows. Um, if you talk about the Spanish coming into the New World, for example, talk to me about how and why they were supposed to be so successful um, and, and how they were able to grow their empires. Don't just tell me they conquered the Aztecs. Talk to me about how Cortez, why and how he, con he, he was able to go in and conquer the Aztecs. So you're taking it a step uh, further with it all. So how not to write the short answer question. I won't go through all of these different things right here. You can pause the video and see what to avoid in your writing on a short answer question. But essentially, I want you to remember that you, you're not writing an essay. This is kind of a sweet spot between writing an essay and then writing bullet points. You are writing about three to four sentences for part A, and then the same thing for B, the same thing for C as well. So um, as always with AP, um, no quotes. You can never quote from anything. If you do, um, it'll, I'll just draw a line right through it and I won't read it. No opinions or speculation. Um, I'm looking for your thoughts, but I don't want you to give me your opinion. I want you to give me facts as to what really did happen. Um, what if, with your analysis, whatever you're talking about as well. So the rule of thumb is this in general. If you could go on an elementary school bulletin board, you're probably not writing enough. And um, always consider, am I writing in a broad generalization? You want to include as many key terms or pieces of SFI specific factual information as you can just to prove to me, your teacher, that well, that you really had a good understanding of whatever we were talking about in class. So how do we ace the SAQ? Here's the big, uh, the, the big potentially the most important part about all this. So in your first sentence, you're going to answer the prompt or answer the question, whatever it may be. So directly answer the question by identifying your claim. C, cite. Briefly define and describe your claim. Here's where you come in with your key terms and your pieces of SFI. 
Um, don't just tell me that uh, the French lived with the Native Americans uh, during the days of New France. Talk to me about the Curia de Bois and, and the runners of the woods and how they traded fur and be very, very descriptive with it. E, expand upon it all. This is where you're essentially asking your questions. You're answering the question, so what? In your third sentence, you're connecting your claim to historical context. You explain how and or why it connects to the prompt all in all. So let me give you an example of this. So let's say you've been given this prompt, part A. Briefly explain one, his, one important political development of the sectional conflict over slavery during the 1850s. So in sentence one, you're going to answer the question. The Kansas-Nebraska Act in 54 was another attempt to settle the sectional conflict over slavery during the 1850s. Let's look back at the prompt in part A. Does that briefly explain one important political development? I think it does. C. Cite in sentence 2. The act split the Nebraska territory into two new territories, Nebraska and Kansas, and allowed each territory to determine free state or slave state through popular sovereignty. There you have a piece of SFI or a key term that's going to qualify what you put in sentence number 1. So now you're backing up your claims with actual evidence. Now let's see how they expanded upon this as well. Although the Kansas-Nebraska Act attempted to settle the conflict over slavery through a more democratic means, it consequently, here's your segue, allowed slavery to expand beyond the Missouri Compromise Line of 3630. This particular author takes it even a step further, and they say, and was considered a political victory for slave power. So I see lots of key terms or pieces of SFI. I see the words consequently. I see the fact that they're expanding upon it. This right here is a great example of um, how to ace the SAQ, at least for part A. Keep in mind that there is also a part B where you do the same thing. You ace part B, about three sentences, maybe four, and then you do the exact same thing for part C. Okay, I hope that this was good and helpful. If you still have any remaining questions, please get in touch with me. I'll be glad to help you out. All right, thanks for watching.